Scientists thought they understood Campi Flegre. They were wrong. For years, seismometers traced earthquakes beneath Naples, thousands of them, but no one saw the pattern. Then artificial intelligence analyzed 54,000 tremors in a single pass. What it found wasn't random. It was a ring, a massive hidden fault encircling the entire caldera. And it's been active this whole time. The ground beneath half a million people isn't just restless. It's structured, organized, weakening along a boundary no human eye had ever seen. In 2025, researchers at Stanford University deployed artificial intelligence to map earthquake activity at Campi Flegre and uncovered a geological structure that had remained invisible for decades. The caldera near Naples has been shaking for years. More than 9,000 earthquakes since 2018 alone. Scientists tracked them, cataloged them, measured their depths and magnitudes. But the sheer volume made patterns difficult to see. Human analysis could only process so much. Each earthquake was a data point. Individually, they told small stories. Collectively, they should have revealed something larger. But the pattern remained hidden. So they turned to machine learning. The AI examined 54,000 earthquakes recorded between 2022 and mid-2025. It mapped their locations, depths, and relationships. And within that data, it identified something remarkable, a thin, continuous, ring-shaped fault running beneath the caldera basin. Our Italian colleagues were surprised to see the ring so clearly, said Xing Tan, the Stanford doctoral researcher who led the study. The ring wasn't theoretical. It was precise. The earthquakes concentrated along this circular boundary, forming a belt of seismic activity that outlined the caldera's weakest zone with startling clarity. But the AI revealed something else, something potentially more dangerous. Two long faults converged directly beneath Pozzuoli, one of the most densely populated areas in the region. If those faults rupture simultaneously, the shaking could intensify in ways current models don't predict. The discovery changes everything. For the first time, scientists can see exactly where the caldera is fracturing. And that line runs directly through neighborhoods, roads, schools, through the daily lives of people who've lived here for generations. Italian seismologists immediately began cross-referencing the AI findings with their own monitoring data. The ring fault aligned perfectly with zones of maximum ground deformation. The convergence beneath Pozzuoli corresponded to areas where uplift has been most pronounced. But discovering the fault structure is one thing. Understanding what's driving it is another. The earthquakes at Campi Flegre aren't caused by rising magma. They're driven by pressurized fluids trapped in a shallow, porous layer of weakened crust. Every earthquake at Campi Flegre occurs above 2.5 miles depth. Not one tremor has been detected deeper. That's unusual for a volcanic system. Typically, magma movement generates deep seismic signals. But here, the activity stays shallow. Greg Barroza, a geophysicist at Stanford, it was clear. All the analyzed seismicity from 2022 to mid-2025 is shallow at depths above four kilometers and does not indicate any migration of magma toward the surface. So, what's causing the ground to rise? In May 2025, Separate research identified a weak crustal layer sitting between 1.5 and 2.5 miles beneath the surface. This layer is porous and permeable, riddled with cracks and voids created by centuries of past magma intrusions. It sits at the boundary between deep carbonate bedrock and the shallow volcanic tuff deposits that form the caldera floor. When magmatic gases and superheated fluids rise from below, they accumulate in this layer. They pressurize the pore spaces and the rock responds by expanding. This is Bradyseaism, the slow, relentless inflation of the Earth's surface. Since 2005, the ground at Pozzuoli has risen nearly five feet. In recent months, the uplift rate reached 20 millimeters per month. That's nearly an inch every four weeks. The earthquakes follow. As the crust stretches and bends, stress accumulates along pre-existing faults. Eventually, the friction holding the fault surfaces together is overcome. The rock slips, and we feel it as a tremor. The ring fault identified by AI is one of those release points. Every tremor along that ring is a fracture, a small rupture where the rock can no longer hold the strain. Scientists emphasize this doesn't mean eruption is imminent. 
Warner Marzaki, a geophysicist at the University of Naples, stated plainly, We do not see any kind of pre-eruptive anomaly, any kind of anomaly that indicates that the magma is coming up. There are no deep earthquakes. No harmonic tremor, the sustained vibration that signals magma movement through conduits. No rapid ground deformation that would indicate a pressurized magma body ascending toward the surface. But the system is under strain. The weak layer is filling, the faults are slipping, and the earthquakes are accelerating. In November 2025 alone, seismometers recorded dozens of tremors. A magnitude 3.6 quake struck on November 18th. A 2.5 followed the next day. The daily average now sits between 22 and 28 earthquakes. Most are too small to feel, but some are not. And here's what concerns scientists most. The earthquakes cluster along the ring fault. They concentrate where the two long faults converge beneath Pozzuoli. They occur in swarms, rapid sequences that suggest cascading failures where one rupture triggers the next. This is a system that's interconnected. When one part moves, others respond. And that means the potential exists for a much larger event. Not necessarily an eruption, but a significant earthquake that could exceed magnitude 5.0. Yet what comes next could be even worse. The last time Campi Flegre erupted in 1538, the ground rose seven meters before exploding, and the warning signs match what's happening now. On September 29, 1538, the people of Pozzuoli felt the earth shift. For weeks, tremors had rattled the town. Violent shocks that knocked people to the ground, cracked walls, sent stones tumbling. The ground swelled upward, visibly deforming. Streets cracked. The bay receded as the seafloor rose. Fish died in the shallows. The air smelled of sulfur. Then, on the night of September 29th, the earth tore open. Lava fountains erupted near the village of Tripergol. Ash blasted into the sky. Explosions echoed across the bay. For seven days, the eruption continued, building a cone that would be known as Monte Nuovo, the new mountain. Eyewitness accounts describe chaos, people fleeing toward Naples, ash falling like snow, the roar of the eruption, a sound like continuous thunder, and the heat even miles away. On October 6th, a final violent explosion generated a pyroclastic surge that swept through Tripergol at over 100 miles per hour, killing approximately 24 people. The village was obliterated. When the eruption ended, Monte Nuovo stood 130 meters tall. That eruption was preceded by seven meters of ground uplift, nearly 23 feet. Today, the ground at Pozzuoli has risen nearly 1.5 meters since 2005. The uplift rate is accelerating. The earthquakes are intensifying. The parallels are undeniable. But 1538 was small. By volcanic standards, Monte Nuovo barely registers. Campi Flegre is capable of far worse. 39,000 years ago, the caldera produced the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption, the largest volcanic event in Europe in the past 200,000 years. It ejected more than 50 cubic miles of magma and ash. Pyroclastic flows traveled over 60 miles. The eruption column reached the stratosphere, spreading ash across Eastern Europe and into Russia. If such an eruption occurred today, it would trigger tsunamis exceeding 100 feet and release sulfur aerosols that would cool global temperatures for years. The immediate death toll would be measured in hundreds of thousands. The population in 1538 was measured in thousands. Today, Half a million people live inside the caldera's red zone. Another two million live within range of ashfall and pyroclastic currents. And now, scientists fear history may be repeating itself, not the catastrophic scale of Campanian ignimbrite that remains statistically unlikely, but the pattern of 1538, a system under strain, uplift accelerating, earthquakes clustering, a weak point identified. Campi Flegre remains at yellow alert status, but the data shows a system under increasing strain, and authorities are preparing for the possibility that evacuation may become necessary. Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology operates a comprehensive monitoring network at Campi Flegre. 27 permanent seismic stations track ground motion in real time. 
25 GPS instruments measure millimeter scale surface deformation. Satellites capture radar images daily. Geochemical sensors monitor gas emissions and fumarole temperatures. The data feeds into the Vesuvius Observatory, where scientists analyze every tremor, every shift, every anomaly. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As of November 2025, the alert level remains yellow, the attention phase. This designation has been in place since 2012, but within that yellow classification, scientists now recognize subcategories. Campi Flegre currently sits at medium disequilibrium, sustained pressure within the system that's more serious than it was five years ago. The Italian government has allocated 500 million euros for evacuations and safety interventions. The European Investment Bank approved up to 1.4 billion euros for reconstruction and seismic retrofitting. Engineers estimate that 1,250 houses in the red zone face high seismic risk, with another 2,000 to 750 at medium risk. Civil protection has divided the region into zones. The red zone encompasses approximately 500,000 residents who would require evacuation within 72 hours if the alert escalates to red. The yellow zone covers more than 800,000 additional people at risk from volcanic ash and gas. Every resident has been assigned to a twinned region elsewhere in Italy. Evacuation drills have been conducted. Routes have been mapped. In May 2025, authorities simulated a worst case scenario. The exercise revealed traffic bottlenecks, communication failures, insufficient shelter capacity. The plan exists, but no one knows if it will work. Meanwhile, the earthquakes continue. The strongest recent quake measured magnitude 4.6 in June 2025. A 4.4 struck in March, injuring several people when debris fell from buildings. Another 4.4 in May. Research from University College London indicates that the caldera's crust has weakened to approximately one-third of its tensile strength measured in 1984. Parts of the system are approaching critical degassing pressure, the point at which rock integrity fails. Christopher Kilburn, a volcanologist at UCL, stated, Our study confirms that Campi Flegre is moving closer to rupture. However, this does not mean an eruption is guaranteed. The rupture may open a crack through the crust, but the magma still needs to be pushing up at the right location for an eruption to occur. The system is primed, but, but the trigger remains uncertain, because what happens next could rewrite maps. Scientists cannot predict when, or if, Campi Flegre will erupt, but the data suggests the caldera is entering a phase of instability with no clear endpoint. The challenge with calderas is their complexity. Unlike cone-shaped stratovolcanoes, calderas are sprawling interconnected systems. Faults crisscross the subsurface. Magma chambers exist at varying depths. Hydrothermal fluids migrate through porous rock. Any one of these components can trigger unrest, but not all led to eruption. Campi Flegre has experienced bradyseismic crises before. In the 1950s, the ground rose and fell. In the 1970s, uplift resumed with thousands of earthquakes. In 1982 to 1984, the crisis peaked. The ground rose four meters and 40,000 residents were evacuated from Pozzuoli. But no eruption followed. The system settled. The pressure dissipated. A life returned to normal. This time, however, the uplift has been sustained for two decades. The earthquakes show no sign of stopping. The weak crustal layer identified in 2025 suggests that fluid accumulation is ongoing and that the system may be capable of storing far more pressure than previously thought. Probabilistic models based on the past 5,000 years suggest that if Campi Flegre does erupt, a small explosive event is most likely 60% probability. A medium-scale eruption carries a 25% chance. A large catastrophic eruption sits at 4%, but probabilities don't account for the ring fault. They don't account for the convergence beneath Pozzuoli. They don't account for the brittleness of a crust that has been stretched for years. Some scientists believe the system is venting pressure gradually, that the earthquakes are releasing strain before it can accumulate catastrophically. Others argue that each tremor is weakening the rock further, bringing the system closer to failure. Both perspectives are supported by data. Both are plausible. Neither can be confirmed until the system reveals its next move. What scientists do agree on is this. Campi Flegre is not dormant. It is not stable and it will not remain in its current state indefinitely. The question is not whether something will happen. 
The question is what and when. For now, the monitoring continues, the sensors record, the data accumulates, and half a million people go about their lives, living above a restless giant that may one day wake fully. They go to work, they send their children to school, they sit in cafes overlooking the bay, they live with the knowledge that the ground beneath them is unstable, that the threat is real, but also that it's been real for decades and nothing has happened. But time is the one thing no one can guarantee, because when the volcano decides to move, it will move faster than any evacuation plan can accommodate. Stay informed, stay prepared, and keep watching the ground.